The final of our three uh, topics that we we're going to talk about for waves was uh, diffraction. So we've done refraction and reflection. Next thing we need to talk about is diffraction. Now I'm going to cover in one slide probably what you already know about diffraction, but there's a lot more to it and has a lot of implications and uses. So we'll start with the review of what I think you should already know. You should already know that diffraction is where a wave spreads out after passing through a gap or going around an obstacle. And diffraction is a very special property because only waves <coughs> can be diffracted. Um, so it's kind of evidence that something is a wave if it does diffraction. And the amount of diffraction we see is at a maximum when the size of the gap or the obstacle is similar to the wavelength of the wave. So just to illustrate that, I've got a wave, here's its wavelength, the gap is significantly bigger, I get minimal diffraction. I've got a smaller gap that's much closer to the wavelength, I see a lot more diffraction. Okay, That's what I expect you to already know. What I don't expect you to know is how this can be used or applied, and how this can affect things like um, or how it can be combined with superposition to create some very interesting effects, which is what we're going to look at. So there are some things called uh, transmission diffraction gratings. So transmission basically means that the light passes through it, and the diffraction grating tells you that it's going to cause lots and lots of instances of diffraction. And um, these things are basically made of glass or plastic with loads of holes rolled into them. Um, so a normal one might be 500 per millimetre, so I could have 100 lines per millimetre. Um, we can also have things called reflection diffraction gratings, where we see diffraction effects after there's been reflection. And a CD and DVD, um, the effect you get when you look at that, that's because of uh, the fact that it's a refraction, sorry, reflection diffraction grating going to uh, have a very sore time by the end of this. So transmission grating, diffraction gratings are basically just slides that have got a lot of gaps cut into them that the light can pass through and there are literally hundreds of gaps per millimetre that the light can pass through. Um, so what happens if I shine, we're going to keep it simple to start with, I'm going to shine monochromatic light to start with uh, through a grating. Now, monochromatic light, I assume you all jump to the conclusion that that is a light that is only one colour, mono as in monobrow, so one, and chromatic as in colour, um, so one colour. You wouldn't define it as that though, because you know, we're A-level physicists, we can do better than that. Um, we would define it as light that is of a single wavelength. It's just more specific and more physics-y. Um, so I'm going to shine light of only a single wavelength through a grating. So what happens? Well, if I shine it through, what I find is that after it passes through my diffraction grating, this is just a colour filter to make sure it is monochromatic, um, I shine it through my diffraction grating, what I see is that I only get light travelling in specific directions. But in fact, get lots of area where there is no light, which is interesting. So I just get a beam that goes straight forward, which we call the zero order. Then I get a beam to the side of it that we call the first, second, third. I can get different numbers on each side, depending on the wavelength of the light and the grating. But it will be symmetrical around this zero order, which is why they just number outwards from there and they sort of fan out. Now, the reason this is happening is because light is being diffracted by every single slit in that grating. So every single slit in that grating almost becomes its own little tiny source of waves. And um, each of those sources of waves then start to interact with each other. They um, start to superimpose once they, as they travel out through space. And in most situations, in most of the points between each of these beams, I'm getting cancellation. But where I've got the beams, I've got reinforcement. And it happens that I get a lot more cancellation than I do reinforcement. So I only end up with these specific points where I'm getting the beams travelling. Okay, so as I said earlier, I've got the central beam, which is my zero beam. The other ones we then number outwards from the zero beam. 
and it's always symmetric about that zero ordered beam. Now, the angle between those beams can change. Uh, like I said earlier, I can end up with a slightly number, different number of beams. Biggest angle any of these could be diffracted to would be 90 degrees, any bigger than that, and it'd be having to go backwards, so it wouldn't be diffraction anymore. But I can make that the angle between each of these beams increase by increasing the wavelength of the light or by increasing the width of the slit, so making the grating um, be you know, further apart, so fewer lines. Okay, so we started simple. I said let's start with monochromatic light. So now let's try something a bit more exciting. Let's try some white light. Hopefully, we all know white light is made up of a mixture of wavelengths, so I'm not just shining a single wavelength through, I'm shining lots through. So this makes it um, more interesting. And that is because each wavelength contained in that white light is going to produce its own set of lines. Now my zero order beam will still be white because all the beams all travel straight through. So right in the middle I've got a nice little patch of pure white light. But on either side what I'm going to see is a rainbow. Um, with the blue purple end towards the middle and the red end further away. And that's because this is as the wavelength changes. Now earlier I told you how I could increase the angle and it depends on the wavelength was one of the things. So obviously as my wavelength changes so does my angle. And it leads to me having this uh, very pretty rainbow pattern on either side of my single beam of white light. So that's quite funky. Um, now, obviously, there is an equation to go with this, and this is where it starts to get a little bit harder, so just take a deep breath, stay calm, concentrate, and you'll be fine. So, the equation is this, d sine theta equals n lambda. So, d is the spacing, or the distance, between the centres of the adjacent slits on the grating. So remember I told you, you're often told that you have 500 lines per millimetre. Well, what I'd need to do is take that one millimetre and divide it by 500, and that would give me the spacing between each of those lines. And um, you'll always be given the lines per millimetre, and you will have to turn it into the grating spacing, but it's just a one over, so it should be fine. N is the beam order number that I'm interested in. So if it was the zero beam, the one, the first order, second order, third order, that's what the N is. Um, lambda is the wavelength of light. And theta is the angle between the beam that I'm interested in and the zero order beam. Um, and as I said before, the number of slits per meter N uh, in the grating is given by one over little n. So uh, it's just the opposite of what I said before. Um, so that should be a D there, not an N but you'll live. Right, um, the diffraction grating equation, to show you where it came from. Don't agonise about this. I'm going to show you where it came from, and I'll talk it through, but I'm going to do it fairly swiftly. If you don't get it, it's not the end of the world. It's basically just playing with trig, really. Um, so it's not too horrific. But you don't explicitly need to know this. I'm just, you know, being thorough. So, um, what I'm going to say is, let's just call theta the angle between the zero order maximum and the nth order maximum. So, the angle that I'm interested in. So, the light that would have gone straight through and the angle and the light that I'm interested in is this angle here that I'm interested in. So, we're going to call that theta. Um, in order for that to occur, the path difference between the light from the two adjacent slits must be equal to n times theta. So, they must have travelled a different distance in order for them to um, be constructively interfering. And if you remember when we talked about superposition, I said that I get constructive, I get reinforcement when I get two peaks arriving at the same time. So in order for it to be a peak to arrive and then for the other wave to also arrive at a peak, the dis difference in the distance they must have travelled must be a whole number of wavelengths because the diff distance between a peak and a peak is a wavelength. So it must be a whole number of wavelengths away. And what we're saying is that the number of wavelengths that that path difference is must be equal to the beam order. So if it was just one path difference, that one wavelength difference, then that would be the first order beam, if it was two, the second, and so on and so forth. 
Um, so looking at the way I've drawn this here is I've said, right, so this is my zeroth order, this is my beam, this is my angle. Well, if I put a right angle triangle between these two adjacent slits and their light beams, what I find is that I should have theta here as well, uh, just by similar triangles. So my path difference must be this distance here, because afterwards they must have travelled the same distance. So this point here must be my path distance. And I know that sine theta equals this distance over this distance here. Um, so basically, I'm saying that sine theta is n lambda over d. Simple as that. Yep. Just using the opposite and the hypotenuse and a bit of trig. Um, and if I rearrange that, I then get d sine theta equals n lambda. I'm going to talk about path difference more. You do need to get that. Other than that, it was just spotting that there's a similar triangle and then playing with trig in a little bit of algebra. So why do we need to know about diffraction gratings? Basically because they are useful, mostly um, in spectroscopy and particularly for astronomy. Basically, I can use these to measure the wavelength of light um, and I can see exactly what the wavelength of that light is and based on the specific wavelengths of light given off by specific gases um, or elements or um, word, multiple elements joined together, compounds, that's the word. Um, so the specific wavelengths of light given off by elements and compounds are very, very unique to those elements and compounds. So if I look at the wavelengths, I can identify exactly what the three um, Thing emitting the light is made up of um, and this can lead to me figuring out exactly what's inside stars and can lead to things such as chemical composition, surface temperature and even how fast they're rotating. So it's, it's really very useful. Um, we're going to talk more about stars and analysing the light that comes from them next year so we will come back to this then because this meshes in really nicely with what we're doing in the second year. Okay, so that is uh, diffraction and diffraction gratings. Um, next time we're going to talk about interference, which is going to help a lot with some of the ideas I was talking about with path difference. And we'll take it one step further and even talk about phase difference as well. Okay, so that's it. If you've got any questions, just remember to ask when you see me.